All right, so this match review comes to us from Justice, who has 200 hours. So you are still, which is funny to think about that 200 hours is not a lot in DVD. You don't have a lot of hours. So you're still on your way to knowing most of your fundamentals, both macro and micro, probably. It's probably going to be some stuff that falls through the cracks, and that's not really your fault. Because you're still learning. Uh, you were playing Chucky, which is a fairly good killer. Even after their changes, they're still pretty excellent. Um, there's some things, a little bit of wiggle room that they lose, uh, but still fairly good, fairly good in chase. Um, the, uh, the cooldown being reduced is very, very helpful. Uh, you are playing on RPD, uh, RPD East, which is the more killer side of the two. Uh, RPD is like... RPD, a lot of people say it's survivor sided, but realistically, RPD, as long as you patrol and keep control of the map in a macro sense, it's actually f can be fairly killer sided because it the ow. Hi, why did you attack me? What did I do? What? How did you attack? Hmm. Hmm. I just like jumped and attacked my arm. But what? What? What did I do? Why did you attack me? Why did you transgress against your father? He who feeds you. Yeah, the main thing about RPD is like patrolling and keeping control of the middle of the map and willingly letting go gens on one side or the other to kind of create a smaller area to pressure. So you kind of have to play it a specific way because I feel like a lot of people, why a lot of people feel oppressed on this map is because if you don't play that specific way, it, you kind of end up up or creep without a paddle. We have a well counter, by the way, explanation point, Will. For every time you interrupt the stream, we are keeping track now. That's right. We're keeping a record. You have a record. How's that make you feel? Ah, don't struggle. World okay, so we're using jump rope, the screwdriver, which is kind of like the most common combo I see a lot. Uh, obviously, rat poison good. Uh, been told not to recommend ruler, because ruler uh, does not work well with current Chucky. So what I've just this just in, got informed uh, during these match reviews, that is no longer a good recommendation. Um, so, yeah, your build is the learning build. Uh, that I always recommend to people. Lethal and barbecue, so you can uh, flow between chases fairly easily without having to guess where people are. And deadlock and corrupt, because they're slow down that don't require you to actually perform well in chase. They're just kind of there to slow down while you try to learn and do better. Yeah. Let's go. Hurry, mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep in mind that what you're doing right here is you're chasing somebody into your corrupt. Corrupt intervention is a perk that works best when you uh, essentially hold a line. Every gen that gets blocked is essentially a gen you no longer have to worry about pressuring or checking until corrupt is up. That is the way you get value out of this perk. That is why you bring it. So by chasing people through your corrupt, you're essentially just like defeating the purpose of bringing the perk. It'd be like bringing pop and not kicking gens. Or bringing pain res and hooking on normal hooks. If you bring corrupt, don't chase through the corrupt. Oh my gosh, you almost got that. That's so funny. You're not busy later? Okay. I'm being called out. Hey, the shoe fits. The shoe fits. I just used it totally well. Okay, good. good to leave the chase now. You realize you're not getting him, but you've kicked several important gens. Or se several important gens, several important pallets, so that's good. It was good to know to leave. We're feeling pretty all right. Ooh, nice hit. Doing our match reviews. This is the last one of the evening. Best match review, anyways. So, when you're dry kicking like that, that's actually pretty all right. And I'm going to explain why in a positive way. Because when you dry kick in front of a hooked person, now because you have to unregress the gen to a certain uh, extent before it stops sparking, now the survivors have to choose between getting the person off hook and unregressing the gen, which is kind of, especially if you get close to like the end of their their hook stage where it's about to pass over to the next hook stage that could be a very very hard decision for a survivor to make so that applies pressure to them that's actually not the worst uh, idea in the world 
<laughs> that is one way people ask me a lot when the when kicks got first uh buffed is dry kicking better now uh mostly no mostly in almost every way dry kicking is essentially still the same in terms of like when you should and shouldn't but that is something that like got way better was kicking gens right near survivors that are hooked that is something you can do more viably you know where that person was going but you just kind of like left him for no kind of interesting not sure why you just kind of like chose not to not chase that person. Anything, but Hi, Slade. Yeah, How's your girlfriend? How are you? I'm just not saying anything. How's your Monday? <laughs> I said you're just going to end up like camping this person for yeah. Michaela's the better choice there because they sad the uh, party palette. But Michaela's just kind of like out in the middle of nowhere. Keep in mind, you know they really, really want that middle gen. I think she went down the hole. Yeah, she went down the hole because she just vaulted uh, the office uh, window over here. Let's try this on the Dude, basement merchant? Oh, gosh. Wee woo, wee woo, fun police. I would not stop to chase Meg here. I would have just kept going on uh, Take this, Michaela. Shit. Especially over there, there's like weak. That, that pout's super weak. But especially Chucky, you get that fairly quickly. Got flicks back? I was talking about that earlier today. I wouldn't want them back to what they used to be, but just a little bit, like, widen it to, like, maybe 100, 120 degrees? That'd be nice, because right now, if you scamper through something, all the survivor has to do is just, like, not stand, like, directly alongside whatever you just uh, scampered, and they're just safe. I want there to be some sort of, like, skill for counterplay to them just, like, just going at an angle, and you're like, okay, well, I guess I just lose now. It just feels too easy. Like even when I'm playing on Survivor and facing Chucky these days, I just I just do that and they just miss. It just doesn't feel like I'm actually kind of playing him. It's just like a limitation of the character. <laughs> Chucky's invitation of issue. Yeah, he has to climb up and bop it. It's very cute. Our job waiting out the uh Party pallet. I do like the idea of a perk being uh, being able to let you build scrap pallets and making that like a mechanic. I like flashbang. Like you have to contribute to the match somehow, and you can build those. Let's play the quiet game. Ah! <laughs> I think dry kicking is something that why you did it well with having somebody on hook there is not something you should do be doing consistently. Yeah, like that, like all you have to do is just like tuck yourself into a corner. I wasn't a scamper, exactly, but like it's really like like Ghost is saying, like if you just tuck yourself in a corner, like pretty easy to dodge. Yeah. Good, good job. I like that. Oh, you could have hit her there, though. You hesitated. Yeah! You did. Li you played literally perfectly and got scared. That was great. You did the right thing. You just you just didn't you didn't commit. You got scared that you wouldn't be able to hit her over the window. But that was exactly you did the exact right thing to bait her there. Oh, yeah. I've had that happen. Or I'm going to go break the pallet with the event thing and then it just like just me into it instead. Hi. What you doing, Mr. Sir? Looks like you're up to no good. I don't trust you right now. What? What you doing? <laughs> what? You guys are right. It's it, it is he is usually here in the match. You're right. Somebody said earlier, like the beginning of the stream, I can't wait for Will to like interrupt match reviews. <laughs> he does start to get a little bit more antsy and active during match reviews. I wonder why. Wants attention? No, he wants to break things. He doesn't. He's not like a cuddle bugger and intention kind of cat. He's like, he's a fierce independent cat. They don't need no owner. He's a little little master of destruction. You're not a. You're not as active when you're gaming. That's true, Red. That's an excellent explanation, actually. That could be it. I look like I like my when I'm gaming, I'm like my hands are in. I'm like blah 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 blah. Like I'm like I'm very locked in. But I when I'm when I'm doing masteries, I'm kind of like lean back. I look like I'm not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. 
Or yeah, it could be that also that he just it's like, uh, it's about time for stream dad. Why are you not off yet? <laughs> we have been streaming for hours, yeah. Can we think about that? He knocked down like my mod the other day, like the one over here. Like he knocked it down. I was I'm very happy he didn't do any permanent damage. Oh, it's Venom? Yeah. He's been back there probably the entire time I've streamed. Uh, obviously, when I first moved here, I he I didn't have a, a setup back there yet. But I've always had him in the background, no matter where I've lived. I just think that thing's cool. It's got a lot of money on it. Who's him? I was wondering why he darted out into the hallway, all excitedly. Will does this really, really funny thing where he'll like bats his bag, like he'll pat it, which was cute when like it was like close to his dinner time. He'd be like, "Guys, it's like dinner time," and I'd be like, "Oh," but now he's like, "Oh, it's three hours early. Maybe if I bat the bag, they give me food." <laughs> and I'm like, "That doesn't work that way." Do not manipulate the system. Oh, sorry, I'm not trying to get away from the match review, but it was a good job to get that person out fairly early. Because now it's a 3v1. I thought you were about to hand me money. I was like, ooh. Do I get paid for this now? Old school runescape? I love old school runescape. Although I, I, I did my 99 mining and it killed my love for the game. Yeah. Pre drop a party pallet? Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> Once again, like, Alrin is right. Like, you, like, dry kicking when somebody's on hook, like right next to the gen you kick, is smart because you're forcing a choice between unregressing the gen and getting the hook. You seem to dry kick every gen before chase, which dry kicking a gen already is not typically a very, very smart thing to do, but also letting the survivor consistently get a lot of, a lot of distance on you every single time is why your chases end up being so long and match time is gen time. Woodcutting? That was my next one I wanted to do, but I just like, I just didn't have like literally doing mining. I didn't know mining was like one of the top 10 hardest, not hardest, but like longest um, skills in the game before I did it. So I was just, I was just exhausted, but I, I, I was already at like, I already got up to like 70 or 80 and I just like, like, okay, well, might as well commit. I just killed my life for the game. Yeah, Blast Mine's making it worse. Absolutely. Let's play the quiet game. I love the quiet game. Wow, that hit? Yo! What the? What? What the heck? Why? Why, why is that hit? Chucky hitbox? Holy gosh, that is disgusting. Wow, gosh. Holy oh, man. I haven't seen this case since the beginning. You, you, you gotta stop dry kicking so much. You gotta. This is an addiction for you. You got a problem. Got a problem. Gotta stop, stop dry kicking everything. Guys, tall for him for some reason. In the terms of DBD jank, that tracks pretty well. So what I'm hearing and what I should notate is that um. Use Chucky's melee attack like the Xenomorph tail attack. Yeah. Sure. Go up and over. Oh, he was right there. <gasps> oh! Oh! You were so obsessed with defending gens that you miss a guy literally sitting right next to you. And you came and say that like you didn't see him because you were Chucky, you were in the third person, and you are close to the ground where he's crouching. Wow. That's crazy. 
That dude is freaking out right now. I would love to be a fly on the wall of that ace. In that ace's room, just wondering what he's thinking. Who swap top five? <laughs> Did you see it? Take a closer look. I'll let you decide. And unsurprisingly, he just gets back on the moon. Good times are coming. You see them out there. <laughs> this really gave me chills. Remember you? Oh, geez, remember? Remember you? Survivor Key times used to be horrendously long. Where, like, the game was so aggressively survivor sided that, like, nobody ever played Killer. And Killer Q times were, like, instant. But Survivor Q times, like, forever. We used to watch Nuke's Top 5 on, like, the Fridays. Like, in between games. I do barely. Yeah, that's very true. He dropped that very early. I don't know why he did that. Ghost Fizz, that was cozy. That was very, very cozy. Because, like, the, the Ghost Fizz videos are so funny. It's like, they're very clearly fake. But there's always that one every once in a while where you're like, how did they do that? How did they fake that one? Did they fake that one? <laughs> It's like it's like one in like ninety of them, but there's always that one one every once in a while. You're like, I don't know how they picked that, <laughs> and it makes you wonder. I've noticed that your hook priority is kind of all over the place too. Like you don't try to hook people that you've already hooked. Like you don't like you go for fresh hooks a lot as the game gets like longer and longer. Which really you should be hooking people that you've already hooked. Yeah, I'll stop dry kicking. And especially dry kicking before every chase. Uh, that is something you gotta fix, like, that is like your primary issue. <laughs> Entertaining? Yeah, it's like, a, it's almost like a form of art, right? Like, even if it's like completely fake, like, I'm sure, like, I, the fact that somebody still put the time in to fake something like that and, like, do, like, a graphic or, like, some sound design, it's still neat, right? Like, they still made something. It's still content. Which is definitely not real. <laughs> Rush slice and dice last second? Yeah, absolutely. Aaron, do you do match reviews? Like, with your content at all? I think you'd be particularly good at it if you don't already. Oh, he's big. Don't kind of wish I did. You should go for it. You know how many people that love Wesker but who would love your like input for their Wesker games? People would love that. People would eat that up. You don't even have to do like a separate like segment or YouTube thing like I do. You can just. Like, Rev does it where you can make it like a really high channel point redemption. That way you're not doing it all the time, but it's like a nice little break and flow of games. Could be great. Could be awesome. Yeah, you actually played fairly fine. I know you didn't win. You got the two out, but like, especially at 200 hours, getting consistent. I think even consistently getting a 2k can be difficult, so. I'm glad you did that. I'm glad you got that much. Oh, that's why Ace has been missing most of the game. Ace has, has the uh, the Blood Amber. <laughs> that would be why. That would be why. That's why he was kind of like, uh, you know, slinking around a little bit, playing a little bit stealthy. Um, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so in terms of your main takeaways, your primary one and the one you probably need to fix, like, yeah, the thing you need to fix like right away, the thing that you you need to fix like yesterday is the fact that you dry kick a lot, but more importantly, you dry kick before entering chases. Every time you stop to kick a gen, that is a essentially a head start you're giving to the survivor every single time. And we start every single chase by giving the survivor head start. Of course, they're going to be able to get into more advantageous situations, reach stronger loops because you gave them a head start. 
Don't give survivors a head start. Don't kick a gen before chasing them. Go back and kick the gen after you fucked them and have better chases. That's what you should do. If you have something like eruption, something like that, I could probably be more inclined to understand what you're doing because at least you would get the 10% and potential aura reading off of Dalian, but you only have eruption, so like even then. So, yeah, don't do that. Um, like Aaron said, you enter your second takeaway. You enter Heidi Ho kind of early. I understand you're trying to do stealth up on people, but as a result of when you finally find people, you're having to slice and dice like very last second and very like erratically, which affects your ability to hit those, which, you know, ergo extends your chases. So I would try to enter Heidi Ho a little bit, a little bit closer uh, to the survivors instead of doing it super far away. Because uh, by doing that, you're giving them a head start, which is uh, not a head start. Sorry, brain just just the kerfuffled entirely. Um, by doing that, you're making uh, yourself have a very very like slim window to execute a good slice and dice, which does not help you at all. Um, final takeaway, which is kind of a macro thing, um, is that you kind of don't really prioritize the right survivors at the right times. Like you had the right idea by getting Meg out of the game early and creating a three v one situation at two gens. But after that, you start chasing like Michaela and Ace, who you have like fresh, like the, they have not been hooked yet. You don't have any pressure on them. So that is why they end up getting uh, the two out is because instead of spending that time chasing people you already hooked, you chase people that you hadn't hooked, uh, which puts you in a pretty um, disadvantageous situation. So make sure you're continuing. Even if you have somebody dead, continue to focus people that you already have hooks on instead of like uh starting fresh chases start fresh chases once the game is like aggressively in your favor yeah very very good for only 200 hours like if you only have you only have 200 hours like there are people that send me match reviews that have like one or 2k hours that, that play in this manner so like all in all like you do very well you do very very well all things considered